you want to judge the, the anti-war movement by its worst members, you judge the pro-war movement by its worst members as well. And those worst members are some of the most evil people that have ever walked this fucking earth. So I went to the anti-war protest on Sunday uh, in D.C. It was a great time. Saw a lot of great people, made, made a few friends. Um, and my experience there was that there was just an insane amount of diversity. And when I say diversity, I mean like real diversity i'm not talking about like you know you got 14 rich dudes in a room and uh two of them are black i'm talking about like diversity of thought diversity of religion diversity of uh, opinion diversity of all different uh, diversity of race as well but diversity of everything that i could possibly think of um and diversity of wealth as well this wasn't some woke Fifty Shades of War Criminal Kamala Harris Colin Powell bullshit. This was real diversity of people with like, there was fucking commies there. There was ANCAPs there. There's fucking Buddhists, Jews, Muslims, Christians. Um, you know, I see turbans. I see uh, robes. I see yarmulkes. I see crosses. I see all these different things. So I didn't see any arguments. I didn't see any fucking arguments. There's a guy with a Soviet flag, guy with an American flag, a bunch of American flags, a few Russian flags, bunch of Palestinian flags and everybody there was united under this one cause, which is that we don't want to fucking die in a nuclear Holocaust and uh, a fucking nuclear war with, with Putin would just kill everybody. And it's kind of the one thing that matters when we're in this case, uh, when we're in a situation where we're all at risk of dying of nuclear war because these fucking old rich white guys and other color individuals are out here trying to create value for the shareholders that buy their fucking asses because they're bought and sold whores for the military industrial complex. I uh, look, the people in power, they don't want to see a black libertarian and a white communist shaking hands. Uh, they don't want to see a Palestinian flag next to a Russian flag next to an American flag. They don't want to see that type of unity between these people united against the ruling class, which is what this fucking was. They want you to care about shit like transgender bathrooms and uh, AOC's dumb fucking dress at the Met Gala and not the fucking war crimes that the people who fund and go to the Met Gala are financing and, and not seeing the, uh, uh, the worst aspects of. They, they don't want to see that because all of these culture war bullshit that all this culture war bullshit, which I am, you know, I'm, I'm not above talking about the culture war shit. Sometimes you have to. Sometimes it's important. But at the same time, I understand that all of that stuff is less important than avoiding thermonuclear fucking war. I saw a lot of criticism leading up to this protest. And a lot of people were saying that people at this protest were pro-Putin. They were pro-Russia. You know, Russian agents like that fucking demon Hillary Clinton called Tulsi Gabbard, who's one of the main speakers there. Colonel Tulsi Gabbard, by the way. Hillary Clinton, someone who never did a day of military service in her fucking life, had the audacity to tell a colonel in the army that she was a Russian agent and people ate that shit up they don't care they'll listen to that fucking murder you know it's funny because Tulsi Gabbard was in the military or is in the military still was a colonel has been in there for a long time she's probably killed less people than than uh Hillary Clinton Hillary Clinton's kill list is probably a lot longer than Tulsi Gabbard's as a what what medical officer I think I don't remember what she what she did, but I know, I, I think she's been in combat, which is, you know, a lot of, you know, she, she is no fucking joke. She's a real goddamn deal. Like she's a, she is a combat veteran and she has been in forever. She's a Colonel. She is real fucking shit. And then people that haven't done anything, but leech off the system, like Hillary Clinton come out and they say that she's a Russian agent and they get away with it. And people, people like, it. and people want me to vote for Hillary Clinton. Fuck no, fuck no. Sorry, it's why you lost in 2016. Same shit and whatever. I digress. If everybody that fucking criticized this anti-war movement just went out and started their own anti-war movement, that would be the biggest anti-war movement ever. And I joined that one because I'm, I'm not about any of this shit besides being anti-war right now. I think it's the most important fucking thing. And I don't like Russia. Fuck Russia. We'll get more back to that later. I fucking, I fucking hate Russia. That doesn't mean I hate Russians. Russians are cool. Oh, I got a story that I'm going to fucking tell. Um, look, so some of the some of the pictures, some of the videos of uh, this event behind the speakers, there's some jackass with a fucking Russian flag. And yeah, there were some people there with Russian fucking flags. 
But like, this is America. We can't do anything about those people being there. It wasn't sanctioned by the event. People showed up with a bunch of flags that I didn't like. They showed up with a bunch of things I didn't like. But once again, the most important thing is being against the fucking war and against all the unnecessary killing and dying. This is the only anti-war movement we have. We don't have another one. And people are just criticizing this anti-war movement. And when, when they're criticizing the anti-war movement and they're, you know, I've had people fucking call me un-American. Fuck you. I got the American flag tattooed on me. I did four years in service to the fucking empire. I've done my fucking time. And I, I'm still, I still love America. I love America. I love what America should be and what it could be. And I love what it is, but I want to improve it. And not wanting to go to war is not, doesn't make me anti-American. It doesn't fucking make me anti-American. If you think it does, and if you think it does, maybe you're anti-American. Fucking maybe. I don't know. It depends on your definition. If your definition of pro-America means that we should be giving $100 billion to Ukraine, where there's a bunch of fucking Nazis, by the way, that's like a real thing. People try to downplay that. But four years ago, that's all that fucking CNN was talking about. And it was real. And it still is. Giving all this money to them. Did it work in the past? When you armed the Mujahideen? Did it work in the past when you armed the people that then became ISIS? Did it work then? Is it going to work now? Is it different this time? Why? Because they're white. Does that make it better? Are the white people not going to rise up against us? Is that also why you care? Do you care because it's white people getting killed? Because you don't care when it's Yemeni people getting killed. Because there's a fucking genocide going on in Yemen. Done with American supplies. Just like the Russian speakers in eastern Ukraine, who live in Ukraine now, when 15,000 of them get killed by American-supplied NATO standard bombs, nobody wants to talk about it. They don't want to talk about this fact that the Ukrainians being supplied by the Americans were killing Russian speakers in their own territory. They just want to talk about how Russia invaded Ukraine, which is a bad thing. Don't invade other people's countries. But you got to look at the fucking situation in the context that it is. And in the context that it is, the Americans provoked Russia to this. They wanted this to happen. And, you know, it's perfect. It's perfect for them because when Russia invades Ukraine, they can then say, oh, Russia invaded Ukraine. It's Putin's fault. Got to stop the madman. Got to stop Putin. He's crazy. He's crazy. He did this for no reason. Nobody just wakes up one day and decides to invade a fucking country. See, this map right here, this is a map of China in the 1920s. It's a map of China in the 1920s. Most of you were listening, but it's a map of China in the 1920s. Trust me. Okay, there's another map over here. I got a bunch of maps from the 1920s. One of them is a map of Anatolia and uh, East Asia. Not not East Asia, Eastern Europe. And I'm looking at it right now. And what I see is that the Donbass, Eastern Ukraine, and a land bridge that goes all the way into Crimea and Crimea are all part of Russian territory in the 1920s. And that doesn't mean I think they should be given back to Russia But if that's not a fucking guide to maybe what's happening now, the fact that the Russians gave this land to the Ukrainians, lots of Russian speakers there, you you haven't bothered to ask what the people living there might want. Maybe they want to go to Russia. I don't fucking know because I can't tell what's propaganda and what's not. But I think it's a possibility that they might want to. And why should we stop them? It has nothing to fucking do with us. Are we are we still saying we're, we're Team America World Police? Is that what we're doing? We're just going to do that forever, dropping bombs across the world until our empire crumbles into decay. Why? People were criticizing this and they were saying that the speakers there aren't really anti-war. Tulsi Gabbard made a comment a few years ago that I don't agree with where she said that limited drone warfare should be used. And, you know, I don't know. I disagree with it. Um, But what she said was like, Slightly pro-war. That that was slightly pro a little bit of war. You know, it wasn't Gandhi levels of pacifism, levels of walk yourself off a cliff pacifism, which is what Gandhi's perception of peace was. It's not that. Maybe it shouldn't be. Probably not. Probably not. And and these criticisms come out and th- they say they're pro-Putin. They don't care about Ukrainians. Uh, they're, they're Russian agents. Uh, the speakers aren't really anti-war. And all these people are saying this, but there, there's no alternative. This is the first anti-war movement in fucking 20 years since the Iraq war. And people are just criticizing it. They're, there's a lot of people criticizing it. So there's people in the anti-war movement that were going there, the guys with the Russian flag, some of the speakers. I don't, I don't really like that Jackson Hinkle guy. I don't know too much about him, but he, he does seem like he's pro-Putin. 
But if you want to judge the anti-war movement by the worst actors in it, then let's judge the pro-war movement by the worst actors in it. And the worst actors in the pro-war movement are a lot fucking worse than the worst actors in the anti-war movement. Because the people who are supporting Ukraine, the people who want us to send guns over there, let, let's talk about the worst of them. You got fucking George W. Bush. Remember when his fucking administration lied to us to get us into a war that killed thousands of Americans? A million Iraqi civilians? You fucking remember that? It was 15 years ago. 20, 20 years ago. It was 20 years ago. It was most of your lifetimes. That happened in your lifetime. What about Vietnam? You know what happened in Vietnam? When in their Gulf of Tonkin flat, false flag incident. It's, I mean, it's widely accepted now, just like it's probably going to be widely accepted in 20 years that all of this was bullshit. It's widely accepted now that the Iraq war was started on bullshit. You think they stopped lying now? They're even using the same fucking methods. They haven't changed how they do it. So they lied in Vietnam. They lied in Iraq, Afghanistan, Syria, Libya. Oh, but they're telling the truth now. Even though they did it five times over the last 50 years. At the same time, they were fucking selling crack to the inner cities and funding Iranian paramilitary groups. At that same fucking time, they just decided they up and went what? Like, I don't know, 2013, they decided, hey, we're going to do everything legit now. We're not going to lie to our people. Motherfucker, they're doing the same thing. It's the same goddamn people. Kissinger's still alive, and that motherfucker funded everything for the last 60 years. Not funded. I mean, he was, you know, he's a fucking Kissinger. You don't know who Kissinger is? Google the motherfucker. So you got Joe Biden, you got George W. Bush, you got Barack Obama, the Nobel Peace Prize winner that bombed another Nobel Peace Prize winner, Doctors Without Borders. These are all the worst people on the pro-war movement. You've also got Halliburton, Lockheed Martin, General Dynamics, and every other fucking defense contractor in this country that has a strict incentive to sell as many bombs as possible to the U.S. government to create value for their shareholders because that's what corporations do. I got a whole fucking episode on corporations that explains how their structure is and what, what their incentives are so that they know that they want war because war is a good incentive for them to fucking make money. So they want war. That's what this institution does. And it's made up of individuals, but each one of those individuals is not more than 50% of that organization. That organization has a mind of its own and the members have a fiduciary responsibility. They are legally obligated, the officers of this company, of any company to make as much fucking money as possible. So you think they won't push war in order to sell more fucking Stinger missiles and nuclear submarines to the US military? You think they give a shit about your sons and daughters dying in the fucking sandbox or a million? They don't give a shit about the Americans. You think they give a shit about the Yemeni children? Of course not. You think they even give a shit about the Ukrainian children? If they gave a shit about the Ukrainian children, they wouldn't have fucking provoked this in the first place. They wouldn't have been selling the bombs that were used to kill the U Ukrainian Russian speakers in the Ukraine. Then now they're selling all of these missiles and all of these tanks and planes and shit. They're, they're sending them over to the Ukraine. And if they're not selling them directly, they're getting rid of the old stock of the U.S. military shit so they can make room for new stock. So that they can fucking make money. And let me show you this. The past year, this fucking protest was on the one year anniversary of the invasion of Ukraine. In that one year, the S&P 500, the index down 6%. You got Raytheon up 8%. General Dynamics is up 8%. Lockheed Martin is up 24 fucking percent in a year. And each one of those companies has a huge spike right before the invasion starts. Because they make money when war happens. And their shareholders make money. And frankly, if you own an index fund, you own part of this company. And you're part of it, even if you don't know. And I'm not blaming you. I'm not saying you're a bad person for owning an index fund. But what I'm saying is you're bought into the system just like everybody else. They're bought into a system in, the, in a much bigger way. And they're much more directly related. But you're a part of it too. And you can get yourself out of it a little bit. But just living in America, you're kind of part of it. And that's why it's our fucking responsibility. And it's not just... It's not just Putin's responsibility. It's our responsibility as American citizens to demand that our government not provoke more of this fucking war and find a diplomatic solution like the Pope is arguing for. The Pope of the Catholic Church wants to broker a peace deal and the U.S. government says no. And why? Because they want the war. They want it to fucking happen. It's not going to affect them. They're not going to die. Draft dodgers like Joe Biden 
are not going to fucking die. It's regular ass American sons and daughters. And it's poor people in other fucking countries that don't have shit. They're the ones who are going to die. And that doesn't matter to the Halliburton CEO. It doesn't matter to the officers of those companies. So you want to judge the anti-war movement by the worst aspects of it? Look inward and look at the people that you share opinions with. The, the people that are pro-Ukraine as well. Because if you want to judge the, the anti-war movement by its worst members, you judge the pro-war movement by its worst members as well. And those worst members are some of the most evil people that have ever walked this fucking earth. They are the types of people who don't care about drone strikes that kill 90% civilians. And they want to criticize Tulsi Gabbard for saying she wants limited drone war, which I disagree with, even though I like her very much. She wants limited drone war. So you want to discredit her because she said limited drone war and you are also on the same side as the people who want unlimited drone war? How is unlimited drone war better than limited? I'll take limited. I'll take a couple missiles in a few cases rather than, you know, bombing an American fucking citizen, a 16-year-old kid, killing him in what, Syria? I don't remember. It was a few years ago. Fucking bomber-in-chief Barack Obama did that shit. Another thing I've seen is that everybody just wants to deny any reason by why Putin would invade Ukraine. No reason why. There's no possible reason why Putin would invade Ukraine. They don't even want to know the context. I'm not saying you have to agree with the context, but you should understand the context in which this happened. This isn't some fucking like, this isn't some random event. Putin didn't wake up and decide, oh, I'm going to go invade Ukraine. A bunch of shit led up to this. And understanding that and talking about it is not excusing Putin's actions. It's not at all. You need to understand what the other person's side is. Like, this is elementary school shit, man. Like, if I have an interpersonal conflict with someone else, I speak to them and I understand their side of the conflict. Even if I don't agree with it, even after they explain, explain it to me, it, it might shed some light on what happened and it might maybe downplay what's been done and understand that there is a solution that we can come to that benefits both of us and that is acceptable to both groups. But in this case, there's a society, no, Russia invaded Ukraine, so it's Russia. You got to tell Putin, tell Putin to stop, tell, tell him to stop. It's like, I, what the fuck are you talking about? How? We have an equal partner. I'm American. Thank God we have Russian people who are willing to stand up against Putin in Russia. In, in America, I, dude, I drove to D.C. I stayed in a fucking hotel. I had a nice dinner, went out to a protest. I was safe. I didn't feel in danger at any point. I was supportive of this cause. There was a bunch of things that are against the government all around me. I'm talking to these people. I'm happy with these people. In Russia, you can't fucking do that. So thank God I'm in America where I'm allowed to do this because I don't know if I would put myself at personal risk for this. Maybe I should. Maybe I'd be a better person if I did. But I had a leisurely weekend. I went to a protest. It was kind of like a vacation. There were promises made not to expand east when Germany reunited. And NATO just keeps expanding east. And I understand that countries, sovereign countries are allowed to do whatever they want. They fucking, they want to join NATO, they can join NATO. But it doesn't mean it's not a threat to Russia. We're surrounding them with missile bases and, and military bases. We got troops that haven't left Germany. We're, we've basically been occupying vassal states in Europe for fucking 80 years since the end of World War II. And speaking of World War II, like, do people think the U.S. Army wasn't the good guys in World War II? Because I'm, I'm look, I'm not taking a side on that. But a lot of people that are pro in pro fighting in Ukraine are the same people who are like, yeah, U.S. Army good in World War II. It was a righteous war. You were fighting with the fucking Soviets. The Soviets were on our side. They invaded Poland too. They murdered all of the Polish military officers. One of the worst war crimes ever doesn't get reported on. People barely even talk about the fact that Russia, Soviet Union, invaded Poland with Hitler. They were aggressors just the same, and we were on their side, not because we agreed with their ideology, but because of shared geopolitical interest. And it had nothing to do with Hitler being more evil than Stalin, which you could, we could sit here and argue that. I don't, I don't know. They're both fucking terrible. But we were on the side of Stalin for geopolitical advantage because it made sense to us at the time. And when the Nazis were defeated, it just, Russia, the Soviet Union, now we're in the Cold War. The geopolitical situation changed at that point. It's all about what helps out the U.S. government the most. What, what helps out any government the most. That's what it's about. It is not about actually 
it, it's not about all the reasons they say it. It's not about human rights violations. It's not about Russians bombing Ukraine. It's not about the unjust invasion of Ukraine. It's all about what the U.S. government wants internationally. If it were about human rights violations, the U.S. government wouldn't be providing arms to Saudi Arabia to kill Yemeni civilians. We wouldn't have allowed Turkey to invade Armenia again, who just suffered a genocide 100 years ago, and they got invaded again for what, like the fourth time in 200 years by Turkey, who's our ally. Turkey all, also, by the way, who was fighting with fucking ISIS. That's why we didn't do anything when the Rohingya Muslims were being murdered in Myanmar. That's why we didn't do anything when, well, actually, we did do something when Iraq was invaded. We were the ones killing the people. Americans were doing that. And those were human rights violations as well, but they were excused. They were as good ones because they created good reasons because of the geopolitical advantage that it gave the United States. It's the stated interest of, of a country, as a stated interest of a government, is always different from the actual interest. It's all optics. They will create. They will create good arguments, and they are great arguments, okay? They're good arguments. They're supported by data and science and fucking history papers. And they have, they have people who are experts come out, experts that have gotten their positions of experts because they've just been funded because they're saying the right thing that supports the right people. And it gets them in the right spot so that those people can give out the opinions that support U.S. global policy. And the CIA states this in their fucking, in, in their publicly available documents. And it just makes sense if you sit down and think about incentives and how important they are. So they, I mean, there are reasons for Russia invading Ukraine. And I'm not saying that to excuse it. I'm saying that because it means that there is a separate solution that we can come to with Putin through diplomacy. And the Pope has offered to broker the fucking deal. And they won't take it. They won't negotiate. Putin's a madman. We came, we saw, he died. That's what Hillary Clinton said about Muammar Gaddafi. 30 years after he gave up his nuclear missiles at the promise that the U.S. government was not going to invade his country. And they did, eventually. They really did. And now there's open slave markets in Libya because the U.S. government and the French and, and other European countries just bombed the fuck out of it, destabilized it. And I'm not saying Muammar Gaddafi is a good dude, just like I don't think Putin is a good dude. But that doesn't mean that we just go in and fucking blow people up like the Israelis just did to Syria yesterday. Ultimately, it comes down to this. I don't want Ukrainians dead. I don't want Russians dead. I don't want Americans dead. I want a diplomatic solution, which is more than possible, which would have been possible the last few years, but it wasn't wanted by the establishment. It wasn't wanted by the U.S. government. And I, I am not sympathizing with Russia at all. But what I am saying is we need to understand why they did what they did, what they want, and how we can come to a solution that works for everybody. Or else more people are just going to keep dying. I've always hated Russia. I fucking hate Russia still. I don't hate Russian people. My one experience with Russian people, the most memorable one, I was on a beach at a resort in Jordan while I was in the, the Marine Corps. And me and my friends were hanging out and this fat Russian guy walks up to us. And he's, he barely spoke English. He was like, hey, hey, uh, America, Amer Americans. We're like, yeah, yeah, Americans. And he's like, Russian. We're like, oh, okay, cool, Russian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he, he goes, you like Trump? We're like, eh, we're like shaking our hands a little bit, like so-so. He asks, you like Obama? And we're like, eh, so-so. Same thing with Putin. We do the same thing for all three people. He's like, he's like uh, whiskey, whiskey? We're like, Wh whiskey, yeah, 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 whiskey, good. Like, yeah, Putin, okay. Trump, okay. Whiskey, good. Yeah, yeah, whiskey, good. He goes to the bar. He comes back with two fucking glasses of whiskey. He hands them to us and he goes, whiskey, good, whiskey. He's like, whiskey, Russia, USA, yeah. And he's giving thumbs up. We're like, Russia, USA, yeah. <laughs> and then he leaves, okay? And that's, dude, fuck yeah. That, that's, that's just a guy. Yeah, it's a guy. It's a Russian guy, but it's a guy who's Russian. And he walked up to a group of, um, you know, there was five of us, white, black, and Hispanic a mixed race group of American guys. And this Russian guy, he just wanted to come up and he wanted to have a short hand conversation with us and he wanted to give us whiskey. And we appreciated it. That was great. That's how I will remember Russian people. That's that, that, I don't want to kill them. I don't want them to kill me. I don't want them to come here. I don't want them to be in Ukraine, but I'm sure most of them don't want to be there either. I've seen the videos in both Ukraine and Russia when they're shoving dudes into vans, taking them off the street with guns because they're conscripting them. You think that's not going to happen here eventually? If this goes to World War III? 
we're lucky if it gets to that point. Because what's most likely going to happen is if this keeps escalating, we're just going to all get blown up in a nuclear war. That's what we're trying to avoid here. And anybody saying anything differently about this is just distracting from the real issue. You can sit here and criticize me all you want. I don't fucking care. Because I'm arguing for the end to nuclear war. I'm arguing for there not to be war, for people not to be killed. This is very fucking important to me as a veteran. That there not be nuclear war. That there not be any sort of war. I don't want to see more people die. And I certainly don't want draft dodging Joe Biden to be the one that leads us into it. If you want to fight the war, go fight the fucking war. The Ukrainians are taking volunteers, the foreign legions. Apparently they're getting slaughtered. Because this isn't a fucking fighting an insurgency. This is fighting a first world government. First world, whatever. Whatever the fuck you want to call it. Russia has a conventional army. They have missiles. Seen the videos of what they can do. This isn't fighting a bunch of fucking camel farmers. Fucking poppy farmers in, in the hills of Afghanistan. It's not fighting the Iraqi air force that we were able to destroy in one fucking day. This is fighting people with modern weaponry that will fucking take a a guided missile and shove it right up your fucking ass and blow you into a goddamn pink mist and everyone else too. I don't want to be a fucking part of that. You don't want to be a part of that. And if you say you want to be a part of that, then shut the fuck up and join the military. You can fly over there right now with no fucking experience and they'll do something with you. I don't know what it is, but they'll find something for you to do if you want to fight the Russians that bad. I fucking hated Russia before it was cool. My family's Hungarian. In 1956, the Soviets invaded Hungary. They killed a bunch of people. Hungary was just, they were trying to be free from Soviet imperialism that the British and the Americans allowed them to be under after World War II because it served their strategic advantage to allow Hungary to fall to the Soviets. So they allowed them to invade again because they did it in 1945 with the fucking Romanians. So they invaded again in 1956, and again, Russian and Romanian and Ukrainian boots were on marching down the fucking capital of Hungary in Budapest, raping people, killing civilians. I hate the Russians, and I always have. I hate Russia. I don't hate Russians. I hate the country of Russia. And the Americans did nothing. It did nothing. The British did nothing. Because it did not serve their geopolitical advantage to intervene. And it does today to intervene. And that's the only reason why they're fucking doing it. So I'm the first one to have a fucking problem with Russia. Because I already fucking hated them. I already hated that country and I don't want them to be invading anybody. But that doesn't mean I can't still understand why they did what they did and try to find a diplomatic solution that allows the lower and middle classes of all these places who are the ones who go in and fight and die in these wars. People of my demographic, 18 to 35 year old men, That's who goes and dies in these wars. And if it stretches out into nuclear war, it's going to be everybody fucking dying. Not just the young men.